The provided code segment demonstrates a use of the warnings module in Python to filter out and suppress warning messages. In time series analysis and stationarity, it is common for various statistical computations or models to generate warnings. However, these warnings may not be critical for the program's functionality, and in some cases, they may clutter the output and make it difficult to identify important information. By importing the warnings module, the code gains access to its various functionalities. The filter warnings function is then called to configure the warnings filter. The ignore argument is passed to this function as a parameter to specify that all warnings should be ignored. Essentially, this code segment ensures that any warning messages raised during the execution of the program are not displayed. The warnings module provides a mechanism to customize the handling of different warning messages, such as displaying them as warnings or converting them to errors using the error filter. However, in this case, the code opts to simply ignore all warnings. This code segment is particularly useful when the program is expected to generate numerous warnings that do not affect the overall functionality or accuracy of the program. It helps maintain a clean and concise output while still allowing the program to continue without interruptions. Note that while filtering warnings can be practical in certain scenarios, it is generally advisable to carefully examine and address the root causes of warning messages to ensure program correctness and to avoid any potential issues that may arise as a result of ignoring possible warnings. In the code, the pandas underscore dot reader module is imported as web for fetching financial data from various online sources. The numpy module is imported as np for performing numerical computations. Next, the stats models dot tsa dot api module is imported as tsa for accessing various time series analysis functions. The plot underscore and plot underscore which functions from the stats models dot graphics dot zoplots module are imported for visually analyzing the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation of a time series. The ic function from the stats models dot dsa dot stat tools module is imported for computing the autocorrelation function values. The q underscore stat function from the same module is imported to perform a young box test for evaluating white noise assumption in a time series. Finally, the add fuller function is imported from the stats models.dsa.statools module for performing the augmented Dicky Fuller test to check for stationarity. Additionally, the probe plot and moment functions from the scipy.stats module are imported for probability plotting and calculating statistical moments of a dataset, respectively. The matplotlib.piplot module is imported as PLT to create plots and visualizations. The Seaborn module is imported as SNS for enhancing the visual appearance of the plots. Overall, this code imports various standard libraries and specific functions required for time series analysis, statistical tests, and plotting. These libraries and functions are essential for analyzing the properties and patterns of a time series, investigating stationarity, and making data-driven decisions based on the analysis results. code sns.set underscore style white grid is setting the style of the plots in a time series analysis and stationarity program using the Seaborn library. Seaborn is a statistical data visualization library which provides a high-level interface for drawing informative and attractive statistical graphics. The sns.set underscore style function is used to specify the style of the plots. In this case, the style is set to white grid. This style gives the plots a white background with grid lines making it easier to visually interpret the data and analyze patterns in a time series. By setting the style to white grid, the code enhances the clarity and readability of the time series plots. The grid lines help in aligning and comparing different data points and trends within the series. 
This style can be particularly useful when dealing with time-dependent data, as it allows for better visualization and understanding of patterns and relationships over time. Overall, this line of code plays a crucial role in improving the visual representation of the time series data being analyzed. By providing a clean and informative backdrop for the plots in the time series analysis and stationarity program. This code is a function called plot underscore correlogram that is used to generate a visual representation of the correlation between the values in a time series data. It takes three arguments, x which represents the time series data, lags which specifies the number of lags to consider for the correlation, and title which is the title of the plot. The function first assigns a default value to lags if it is not provided by the user. It sets lags to be the minimum of 10 or 1 5th of the length of the time series x. Then. It creates a figure in a set of subplots using the Seaborn and Matplotlib libraries. The figure has a size of 14 by 8 inches and consists of two rows and two columns of subplots. In the first subplot, it plots the time series X along with its rolling mean with a window size of 21. It also calculates the QSTAT and ADF, augmented Dickey Fuller, statistic values for the time series and displays them as text annotations in the top left subplot. In the second subplot, it plots a probability plot, which is a graphical representation of how well the data fits a theoretical distribution. It also calculates and displays the mean, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis of the time series as text annotations. In the third subplot, it plots the autocorrelation function, ACF, of the time series. ACF measures the correlation between a time series and its lag values at different time lags. In the fourth subplot, it plots the partial autocorrelation function, PACF, of the time series. Which measures the correlation between a time series and its lag values after removing the correlation explained by earlier lags. Finally, it sets the X labels for the last two subplots, sets the title of the figure to the provided title, removes the spines of the subplots, adjusts the spacing between subplots, and adjusts the top position of the overall figure. In summary, this code generates a multi-plot visualization of various statistics and correlation measures for a given time series data. It provides insights into the stationarity and autocorrelation properties of the time series.
first line of code retrieves data on industrial production using the web.data reader function. This function accesses the FRED database and retrieves the time series data for the specified series, in this case, the series name is IPGMFN. The data is gathered from 1988 to the end of 2017. The squeeze method is used to convert the retrieved data into a series object, and the dropna method removes any missing or NAND values from the data. The second line of code retrieves data on the NASDAQ index. It uses the same web.data reader function to access the FRED database, but this time the series name is NASDAQ.com. The data is gathered from 1990 to the end of 2017. Similarly, the squeeze method is used to convert the retrieved data into a series object, and the dropna method removes any missing or NAND values. Overall, this code retrieves and processes historical data on industrial production and the NASDAQ index. These data points will likely be used for analysis and modeling purposes in the broader program centered around time series analysis and stationarity. Specifically, this code aims to decompose a time series into its different components using a method called seasonal decomposition. The tsa.seasonal underscore decompose function is being used here to achieve this decomposition. The function takes two arguments, the time series data to decompose, industrial underscore production, and the model type of decomposition, additive in this case. The industrial underscore production time series is assumed to have a seasonal pattern, meaning that there is a repeating pattern within the data that occurs over a fixed period of time, such as daily, monthly, or yearly patterns. The seasonal decomposition process aims to separate this seasonal pattern from the other components of the time series. The decomposition process involves breaking down the time series into four components, trend, seasonal, residual, and observed. The trend component represents the long-term upward or downward movement in the data, while the seasonal component captures the regular seasonal variations. The residual component represents the random or irregular fluctuations that cannot be explained by the trend or seasonal patterns. Finally, the observed component is the actual original data. The choice of the additive model for decomposition means that the seasonal and trend components are added together to obtain the observed data. There is also an alternative model called multiplicative, where the seasonal and trend components are multiplied together. By decomposing the time series, using the tsa.seasonal underscore decompose function, it becomes possible to analyze and understand the individual components of the time series, which can be helpful in forecasting, identifying trends, and detecting anomalies. decompose a time series data into its original series, trend component, seasonal component, and residuals. The code starts by creating a new data frame called DS with the original time series data assigned to the column original. The industrial underscore production variable refers to the original time series data. Next, the code uses the assign function multiple times to add additional columns to the DS data frame. The components.trend refers to the trend component of the time series, and it is assigned to a new column called trend. Similarly, the components.seasonal refers to the seasonal component and is assigned to a new column called seasonality. Finally, the components.resid refers to the residuals, the difference between the original series and the sum of its trend and seasonal components, and is assigned to a new column called residual. 
After creating the TS data frame, the code uses the plot function to generate a visualization of the decomposed time series. The subplots equals true argument tells the function to create subplots for each component, and the fig size equals 14, 8, argument sets the size of the figure. The title argument is used to provide titles for each subplot. The plt.subtitle function adds an overall title to the visualization, specifically saying it is a seasonal decomposition. The font size equals 14 argument sets the font size for the overall title. The remaining code is responsible for setting the style of the plot, removing the spines, borders, from the plot, adjusting the layout, and adjusting the top of the plot to ensure that the subplots and the overall title have enough space. Overall, this code performs time series decomposition and visualizes the original series, trend component, seasonal component, and residuals in separate subplots. This visualization helps to understand the underlying patterns and components of the time series data. whether there are any zero values present in the NASDAQ and industrial underscore production variables. To accomplish this, the code uses the any method, which is a function that checks if any of the values within a specific variable or array satisfy a particular condition. In this case, the condition being checked is whether any of the values equal zero. The first part of the code, NASDAQ equals equals zero. Any comma checks if there are any zero values in the NASDAQ variable. It returns either true or false depending on whether there is at least one zero value or not. Similarly, the second part of the code, industrial underscore production equals equals zero. Any comma checks if there are any zero values present in the industrial underscore production variable. It also returns either true or false based on whether there is a zero value or not. By examining the presence of zero values in these variables, this code helps in identifying any potential issues or anomalies in the data. Since zero values can affect the calculations in time series analysis and can indicate missing or incorrect data points, it is important to check for their presence. In summary, this code snippet checks whether there are any zero values in the NASDAQ and industrial underscore production variables using the dot any function, allowing the larger program to perform necessary actions or handle any issues related to zero values in the time series data. Specifically, it deals with two variables, NASDAQ and industrial underscore production. The code performs a logarithmic transformation on these variables. By taking the logarithm of the NASDAQ and industrial underscore production variables, the code creates new variables named NASDAQ underscore log and industrial underscore production underscore log, respectively. The purpose of this transformation is to achieve certain statistical properties that are useful in time series analysis. Logarithmic transformations are commonly applied in time series analysis to stabilize the variance of a variable and make it more normally distributed. By taking the logarithm, the code flattens out potentially skewed or heterostatic patterns in the data. This transformation can be particularly helpful when analyzing financial data, as it can reduce the impact of extreme values or outliers. The NumPy library is used in this code to perform the logarithmic transformation. The np.log function is specifically used to calculate the natural logarithm of the input variables. This function takes each value in the input series and applies the logarithmic operation, resulting in a new series with transformed values. Overall, this code takes the natural logarithm of the NASDAQ and industrial underscore production variables, creating new variables named NASDAQ underscore log and industrial underscore production underscore log. These transformed variables can then be used in further analysis and modeling within the larger program.
performs differencing operations on two different time series variables, NASDAQ underscore log and industrial underscore production underscore log, in order to make them stationary. Differencing is a common technique used in time series analysis to eliminate trends and seasonality in the data. This is important because many time series models and statistical tests assume stationarity, which means that the mean and variance of the series remain constant over time. The first line of code NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff equals NASDAQ underscore log dot diff. Dropna calculates the first difference of the NASDAQ underscore log series. This involves computing the difference between consecutive values in the series. By taking the difference, this operation eliminates any trend or relationship between the values and ensures that the resulting series is stationary. The Dropna function is then used to remove any missing values that may have been introduced by differencing. The second line of code industrial underscore production underscore log underscore diff equals industrial underscore production underscore log dot diff 12. Dropna calculates the seasonal difference of the industrial underscore production underscore log series. In this case, the diff 12 function is applied to the series, which computes the difference between each value and the value from 12 periods, or 12 months, ago. This corresponds to a yearly seasonal difference and helps remove any seasonality in the data. Similar to the previous line. Dropna is used to remove any missing values resulting from the differencing operation. Overall, the code performs differencing operations on the NASDAQ underscore log and industrial underscore production underscore log series by taking the difference between consecutive values and values from 12 periods ago, respectively. This helps to make the series stationary, which is a prerequisite for many time series models and statistical analyzes.
The code is responsible for creating a 3x2 grid of subplots using the matplotlib library. Each subplot represents a different aspect of the time series analysis and stationarity. The first subplot, axis 00, displays the NASDAQ composite index. The ADF, augmented Dickey-Fuller, test is applied to the data to determine stationarity, and the resulting p-value is displayed as a text annotation. The second subplot, axis 10, displays the logarithmically transformed NASDAQ composite index, NASDAQ underscore log. The ADF test is again performed on this transformed data, and the p-value is displayed as a text annotation. The third subplot, axis 20, displays the difference logarithmically transformed NASDAQ composite index, NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff, which accounts for any seasonal or other trends. The ADF test is once again applied to this difference data, and the p-value is displayed. The fourth subplot, axis 01, displays the industrial production, manufacturing data. The ADF test is performed on this data, and the p-value is displayed. The fifth subplot, axis 11, displays the logarithmically transformed industrial production, manufacturing data, industrial underscore production underscore log. The ADF test is applied to this transformed data, and the p-value is shown. The sixth subplot, axis 21, displays the difference logarithmically transformed industrial production, manufacturing data, industrial underscore production underscore log underscore diff, which considers any seasonal or other trends. The ADF test is applied to this difference data, and the p-value is displayed. The Seaborn library is used to set the plot style to dark, making the visualizations more visually appealing. The sns.de spine function removes the top and right spines of each subplot, and fig.tide underscore layout ensures proper spacing between subplots. Additionally, fig.align underscore labels axes aligns the y-axis labels for improved readability. Overall, this code generates a grid of subplots that display different time series data along with the results of the ADF test, providing insights into the stationarity of the data. provided is a function call to plot a correlogram for a time series data set called NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff. A correlogram is a graphical tool used in time series analysis to visualize the correlation between data points in a time series at different lags. It helps in identifying patterns or relationships in the data. In this case, the NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff data is a transformation of the NASDAQ composite index, where it has been converted to logarithmic values and then differenced. The logarithmic conversion is often used to stabilize the variance of the data, while differencing is a common technique to make the time series stationary by removing any trends or seasonality. The plot underscore correlogram function takes in the NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff data as the first argument and specifies the maximum number of lags to consider using the lags parameter. The title of the plot is set to NASDAQ composite, log, diff. By running this code, a correlogram plot will be generated, visually representing the correlation NASDAQ underscore log underscore diff data at different lags. This can provide insights into the autocorrelation structure of the time series and help identify any significant lags or patterns that may be present in the data. of this code is to plot a correlogram for a time series data called industrial underscore production underscore log underscore diff. A correlogram is a plot that shows the correlation coefficients between a time series and its lag values, also known as autocorrelations. To create the correlogram, the code uses a function called plot underscore correlogram and passes the industrial underscore production underscore log underscore diff data as an argument. It also specifies a title for the plot as industrial production, seasonal diff. The industrial underscore production underscore log underscore diff data is likely a time series that has already been pre-processed or transformed to achieve stationarity. 
In this case, it seems to have been transformed by taking the logarithm of the differences between consecutive observations, which is a common technique for removing seasonality from time series data. By plotting the correlogram, the code will visually represent the strength of correlation between each lag value and the current value of the time series. This information is useful for identifying the presence of seasonality or trends in the data and for determining appropriate models and parameters for forecasting or analysis.